it's not always easy to see whether a reaction is a redox or not. So now we're going to look at using oxidation numbers, which we learned about in the first video, in order to figure that out and combine it with all the other stuff that we've already learned about redox reactions. Remember we said that in a redox reaction, uh, what it involves is a transfer of electrons from one reactant to another. So that basically means then that our first reactant is losing electrons, which means because it's losing those negative electrons, it's effectively becoming more positive. And that, we know from what we learned in the first video, means that the oxidation number therefore becomes more positive. Similarly, our other um, reactant, which has gained the electrons, it gains those electrons, hence becomes more negative, and the oxidation number therefore becomes more negative. Let's look at this now using more formal terminology. So, if our first reactant loses electron, an electron or electrons, that means that it is undergoing oxidation. Remember, oxidation is loss, um, or loss of electrons is oxidation, however you want to remember it. We also now know that the oxidation number of the atom in that compound is going to increase. So we can see that there's a link between oxidation and an increase in the oxidation number. Similarly, in our other reactant that is going to gain those electrons, we know that um, reduction is gain or gain of electrons is reduction. So we know that because it's gaining electrons, it's undergoing reduction. We also know that the oxidation number decreases, which means that there is a link between the um, substance that has been reduced and the fact that the oxidation number decreases. And a great way to remember this is that when you see a reduction in the oxidation number, it means reduction is happening. So in summary, if there's been a change in the oxidation number of any atom in the reaction, then it means there's been a change in the charge which means that electrons have been transferred, and so the reaction must be redox. Note that the oxidation number of one substance, the one that undergoes oxidation, will increase, while the oxidation number of the other substance that undergoes reduction will decrease. Let's do an example. This question asks if this reaction is a redox reaction or not. So, what we do is we go through each of the different atoms in the substances, and we have a look at the oxidation number. So let's do the easy ones first. Uh, hydrogen will always have an oxidation number of plus one. That can be true um, in hydrogen chloride. It's also going to be true in sodium hydroxide, and it's also going to be true in water, but there are two of them which we mustn't forget about. Then for uh, oxygen, let's do that, that one. That's also another easy one. Um, for oxygen, that's always going to have an oxidation number of minus two, which is true in sodium hydroxide as well as in water. Now again, according to our rules, the sodium ion is always going to have a charge of plus 1. And let's just make sure in this uh, substance, in sodium hydroxide, this makes sense. We've got a plus 1, we've got a minus 2, and we've got another plus 1, which in total comes to uh, 0, which makes sense because this is a neutral compound. So you can always use these as, as confirmation that it is, in fact, true. The other sodium is also going to have a charge of plus 1. Then our chlorine, um, in... As we know from our rules, in substances that only have two different types of atoms, where you've got a halogen, they will always have a charge of minus one. So in both of these substances, they've got a charge of minus one. Now what we can see from this is that none of the oxidation numbers of, these, uh, of, of any of these substances have changed, which is an indication that this is not an, a redox reaction we can actually see that it is, we could have seen before if we hadn't used oxidation numbers, that this is actually an acid-base reaction. We've got an acid, hydrochloric acid, reacting with a base, sodium hydroxide, to form a salt, sodium chloride, and water. So this is actually an acid-base reaction, but we could use oxidation numbers to confirm that it wasn't redox. Okay, let's do another example, again asking if this is a redox reaction or not. I've already filled in some of the oxidation numbers. The, uh, the chlorine, because it's in a, in a substance that it only has two different types of, of atoms, we know that it's always going to have a charge of minus one. There are three of them within that, um, that substance, and so that's why we're going to be multiplying it by three. Note that the mole ratio two is not taken into account when using oxidation numbers. We've got in, in green, we've got our hydrogens, which always have an oxidation number of plus one. And in blue, we've got the oxygens, which always have an oxidation number of mi minus two. So now we can go ahead and do the others. We've got um, 
space to figure out the oxidation number of iron when in iron 3 chloride and we've got space to figure out the oxidation number of sulfur when in sulfur dioxide, sulfur in sulfuric acid and iron in iron 2 chloride. So we need to go and fill in those, those gaps. Okay, let's start with the iron 3 chloride. Because this is a neutral substance, we know from our oxidation number rules that the total of those oxidation numbers, the sum of those oxidation numbers, needs to add up to zero. So in order to, to balance that with the negative 3 oxidation number of the chlorides, we need to, the, the, the iron needs to have an oxidation number of plus 3. If we go to the sulfur dioxide now, the same thing applies. Because it's a neutral substance, we know that the oxidation numbers, the sum of the oxidation numbers, needs to be uh, zero. So because we've got a negative four overall contributed by the oxygen, that means that the, the oxidation number of the sulfur must be positive four. If we go to the sul uh, sulfuric acid down here, this one looks a little bit more tricky, but it's really not. We've got the, the hydrogen contributing an oxidation number of plus 2 and minus um, 8 from the, from the oxygens, which means for um, the sulfur in sulfuric acid, it must have an oxidation number of plus 6. And finally, if we look at the, uh, the our, our last substance, iron 2 chloride, again needs to add up to a total of uh, of zero. So we've got minus two coming from the from the chlorides there, which means we would need to have a positive two being contributed by the iron. So what you can see here is that while all the other oxidation numbers stay the same, the oxidation number of iron goes from positive three. To positive two. So, in other words, the oxidation number of iron is is going to let's write it down like this. The oxidation number of iron is going to decrease, while the oxidation number of sulfur went from positive four to positive six. So that's an indication that the oxidation number of sulfur actually increased, which means sulfur must have undergone oxidation, and iron must have undergone reduction. Now it's time for you to do some practice. You can do exercise 3.7 numbers 2 and numbers 3. That's on page 78 of your textbook. Good luck with that and I hope you've enjoyed the section.